My name's Martin Van Holten and I'm from Sydney, Australia. Today I'll be presenting to you a rail yard capacity model that was recently completed for our client QI National. In my presentation today I'll be uh, giving you a brief overview of the two companies involved um, as well as giving you a bit of background to the uh, modelling assignment as well as running you through the challenges, solutions and outcome that came out of the modelling process. The company I work for is Evans & Peck. We are an Australian-based international consultancy company with offices located around Australia as well as within Asia. We also have an increasing global presence um, through our parent company, Wally Parsons, and we provide business and project advisory services which focus on the resource and infrastructure sectors. One of those services that we provide is decision modelling, and it's also through this um, decision modelling services that we also act as the Australian distributors of any logic. We're engaged by QI National uh, to undertake this modelling assignment. QI National is Australia's largest rail freight operator, transporting around 250 million uh, tonnes per annum. They transport a wide variety of commodities. But the two main commodities that they transport are coal and iron ore. Their coal operations um, see them be the, make them the largest uh, transporter of export coal from the mine through to the port. QI National operates all around Australia, but their main operations are located within Western Australia and also within Queensland. To give you guys a bit of perspective of the size of Queensland, uh, we've got a map of Germany and you can see we're looking at quite big distances to transport these goods around. The rail yard um, that, we, that the, model, uh, the modelling assignment was the subject of is located on the Mount Isa to Townsville rail line. Mount Isa is a major mining centre within Australia where a lot of um, metals are mined and they're transported along this rail line through to Townsville where it's exported. Townsville is the uh, industrial capital of uh, northern Queensland. On this line, QI National operates several rail yards and this was sort of the start of what they wanted to understand. They wanted to move their operations from a rail yard in Huondon, 300, approximately 350 kilometres to a rail yard within Townsville, and they also wanted to move a rail yard uh, located just south of Townsville down to the Stewart Yard, which is shown here. The reason they wanted to move the operations to this yard was for operational efficiencies um, and also to give them greater flexibility in scheduling services to run out of the jetty. Within the Stewart Yard, the primary, uh, primary activities are looking at locomotive uh, preparation, wagon maintenance, as well as locomotive maintenance, and it's also used to undertake reliability examinations. So the challenges that QR faced with wanting to understanding whether they could move these operations to the yard was they needed to understand what the uh, capacity was within the Stewart Yard, what additional services could be moved to the yard, and also what additional infrastructure was required, if any. They needed the model to be scalable because they wanted to reuse components in the future for other rail yards and they also wanted to be, be able to include it within a larger uh, rail network model that they're also developing. And as with all modelling assignments, they needed, to, um, they needed the assignment to be completed within a relatively short period of time. So QR National took a, uh, undertook a review of all the different software packages that were out there for modelling and they decided on any logic primarily because of the rail yard and enterprise libraries. We then undertook the modelling assignment, constructed the rail yard, benchmarked the current operations um, against the current, or benchmarked the operation, or benchmarked the model against the current operations um, to give to give a bit of uh, validity to, or to give validity to, validity to the model. This allowed us to then determine what the current capacity was, identify where the additional operations could occur and test what additional infrastructure was required and if um, what impact these additional um, operations would have on the master train timetable. So here we can see uh, the model in action. We have the rail yard here. We can see that uh, we have some locomotives up in the storage area as well as some other activities happening uh, throughout the yard. If we take a closer look at the locomotive uh, provisioning, we'll see that trains or locomotives coming to here, they'll queue along this section of track here, 
before being provisioned, moving through to a wash bay, which has a probability of 50% of occurring, before moving back to get brake tested. From the brake testing, they then have the option of either going through to storage or to come down into the locomotive maintenance, which is located down here. So they'd move forward. If these two first inspection bays are occupied, they'll park along here. Uh, following the inspection, they'll then move up here to have wheel calibration or move into these other bays for um, repairs or heavy maintenance. In the wagon maintenance, uh, trains can come in either from either the, uh, the top end or the bottom end of the rail yard. The wagons are dropped off here. The empty uh, locomotive then drives back towards uh, the Townsville port, whilst the wagons move through um, to the maintenance facility before being uh, moved through to the pickup area. And also reliability examinations were undertaken within the yard. Um, here we can see a train just leaving um, through the yard. So driving all that uh, nice animation is the model logic. So if we take a closer look at that, we can see we set up the rail yard as its own component so it could be easily exported um, and used in other models. And we also have each of the operations set up as their own components. Two reasons for this, we can easily swap um, the components in and out if we want to try additional operations and it's also good to communicate what activities are occurring within the model. If we take a closer look at one of the components here, here we can see the logic, which I won't go through now, but if you're interested, catch up with me in the lunch break and we'll take you through it. But we have basically wagons uh, getting dropped off here, uh, decoupled, and then moving through the, ma uh, the maintenance process before being taken back out of the yard. Re in terms of reusable components, uh, this is just an example of a few of the ones we've set up. For the more detailed sort of side of things, we have track parking, which allowed us to easily um, set up the number of parking spots on a se section of track for the locomotives. We then had the rail yard itself, so it could be used within a larger model. And then we also had, for this model, because we modelled the network at a high level, we set up a component which we called five speed line, which allowed us to model trains at different speeds with, on the network. The main modelling issues that we came up with um, in doing this thing was avoiding deadlock within the yard and also giving the main line priority over exiting um, traffic from the yard. We were able to overcome these issues quite easily by using um, any logics resource components which allowed us to easily identify where these conflicts were occurring. And as with most modelling assignments, data collection was also an issue, but we overcame this by just creating a single um, spreadsheet which was easily um, able to be read into the model. And we were also able to set this up in a similar format to what the source data was set up as. The results that came out of the model looked at capacity and availability. So if we take a quick look at capacity, we set up each of these graphs for, or a variety of these graphs for each of the different facilities within the yard. So in terms of utilisation and waiting time, the yellow represents when that activity is actually occurring and the green, which isn't very easy to see there, represents when the activity has been completed but the train is unable to leave because the resources or the tracks aren't available for it to leave on. We also had time distributions which allowed the client to identify how long or the range of times that uh, wagons or locomotives were staying within the yard. And we also had queuing and stow um, stowage um, graphs showing um, the usage of diff different segments of tracks as well as the total number of uh, locomotives, locomotives within the yard. We then summarised all these in this uh, graph here, which we called yard score, which was basically a summation of all the different utilisations into a single number. Um, we then have the breakdown of each of the main uh, components within the yard shown here, and then the breakdown of those components shown in the lighter colours there. In terms of availability, we set up this graph here. So on the vertical axis here, we have all the activities um, for entering and ex exiting the yard, so bypassing the yard, um, entering the local pre locomotive preparation area, etc. The red represents when one or more of the resources that are required um, for a locomotive or train to enter the yard um, has been occupied, and green represents when all those uh, resources are available. So this gave a sort of high level overview of where they could fit in these additional activities 
Then, of course, you'd be required to drill down a bit more to a graph similar to this one, which then showed when the activity was actually occurring, where there was usable time and where there was unusable time. The other outcomes that came um, out of the model, so the outcomes that came out of the model was that we were able to determine the capacity of the yard, identify where those additional activities could occur and what the additional infrastructure was required. We are also able to communicate what the available options uh, for the yard were as well as the logic and assumptions used within the model to both upper management as well as to yard operators. In terms of timing, we made the model um, out of a lot of components so it's easily expandable and we comp completed it two weeks ahead of schedule. Here we can also see uh, a bit of the 3D animation which was very useful in communicating the operations um, which were simulated in the yard to people within the company. The next steps for the model that QR National and um, ourselves will take will look at uh, expanding the model to include, include, include it in a more detailed model of the Mount Isa line, including jetty and port operations up at Townsville. We'll be testing different operating regimes as well as potentially turning it into an operational planning tool and of course we'll be reusing the components within our, um, that we've made in this model in other yards. So to wrap it all up in summary, the model um, achieved or was able to overcome all the challenges that the client faced, were able to determine the capacity of the yard within the required time, um, test proposed options, identify what the best option was um, and give upper management an increased level of conf confidence about making that decision as well as um, allowing the model to be easily expanded and components to be reused um, in the future. Um, so that concludes my presentation. If you've got any questions, I'm more than happy to take them or we can have a chat about them during the lunch break. Thanks. Oh, questions? Thank you for your presentation. Um, it's quite interesting. I'm working also on a, a Rayout library model. So I'm interested in uh, if your model is a synchronous or, a, or an asynchronous model, and which routing algorithm do you use? What was the last part of the question? With, with uh, which, uh, which routing algorithm? Do you use scheduling uh, and? Yep, so, we, so we, the way we set it up was in the input spreadsheet, we've identified all the different uh, trains that are available to go into this yard and then we set up a schedule which has the train identification, um, the time that it goes into the yard and then what operation will um, it'll be undertaken uh, within the yard. So it's an, it's an asynchronous yep. model. Thank you. Yeah. More questions? Well, do, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, um, just one more question regarding your model. Um, you said you have several model components, which yep. I are, un as I understand, would be process components mainly. Um, just to implement these process components, uh, what was the level? Was there any level of individual programming necessary, or did you could you model all the processes by the enterprise library? Let's say. Uh, it's just the composition of the different uh, bits and pieces any logic already provides. The, there is a little bit of programming in it, but not a lot. So it's primarily um, all mm -hmm. done either with the rail yard components mm -hmm. or the enterprise uh, library components. And regarding the processes for the individual trains, uh, is there a separate process model for each uh, handling of each of the trains? Or uh, how does the model work regarding different types of traffic probably? In terms of, you said you have a you ha you have an input schedule, yep. uh, which may you have probably different model trains or whatever. Is there yep. an individual model process for each of these model trains? Yeah. So when the when the train goes into the yeah. yard, it reads what activity that train is required to do within the yard, and then it selects the appropriate activity, as we saw within the mm -hmm. uh, logic diagram, and then it runs through that process. There is some communication between those components um, mm -hmm. if it was required, but there's not a um, whole lot of communication between them apart from through the resource mm -hmm. um, resources. And regarding, last question, regarding 
track occupation, how uh, did you deal with that, so let's say uh, track occupation by either a moving train or track op occupation uh, with wagons or engines? In how well did we you did deal it with that in your model? <laughs> uh, we did it in terms, of, uh, in terms of picking up the last, the last train. Mm -hmm. um, so we had it. We had a um, function that checked when the last carriage was um, through that section of track, which then released mm -hmm. the component. Okay. Uh, yeah, the resource. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Go ahead.